Good morning, dear students. Uh, in the previous class, we have discussed about density. Okay. So today we'll uh, just recapitulate density a little bit, and then we'll move further. Hope all of you are very good. Okay. Situation is very difficult for us, and we have to fight together. However, we're coming to uh, the part we have discussed in previous class. That is density. What is density? That I have told. That is mass per unit volume why it is needed that is also i have discussed that it may possible if i have taken two bodies have same mass but they have different volume assume uh, i have told earlier also assume i have taken 1 kg of iron and 1 kg of cotton okay or 1 kg of paper Simply, the volume of iron will be much lesser than the volume of paper. Okay, but both are having same mass. Similarly, if I have taken same volume, assume I have taken 1 meter rod of iron and 1 meter rod of copper. So, if their volume should be same. As the length is same, uh, we can assume that volume should be same. But if I measure the mass, they are not same. So something or some physical quantity is there which is different for different materials and that is density. So density is mass per unit volume. How do we represent it? We represent density D by M by V where M is equals to mass and V is equals to volume. Okay, so when anyone asks us to write about density, we have to write the definition and after that we have to write the equation also. Then your answer should be completed. Similarly, we have learned the SI unit that is kg per meter cube. We have learned the CGS unit that is gram per centimeter cube okay and we have find out the relation between them that is one gram per centimeter cube equals to thousand kg per meter cube how we can able to find the relation that we have done in the previous class okay so i think there shouldn't be any short of doubt regarding that then what we have done in the last class we have done that density of a regular shaped body density of regular shaped body what we have done if assume we are having a sphere of radius 7 cm and mass 44 gram okay we assume okay then how we can find the density of that sphere so we know density is equals to mass by volume volume of sphere we can able to find through radius because we know it is mass by volume of sphere is 4 third pi r cube 4 third pi r cube if i put the value here okay so then value of mass 44 4 third so 3 will be coming up 3 is here pi it is 22 by 7 into r cube means 7 into 7 into 7 okay so this 7 7 will be cancelled out 22 okay 2 2 sir okay so it will come 3 by 7 7 is 49 into 2 okay so it is 3 by 98 
so 3 by 98 gram per centimeter cube and now you can convert it in decimal so that is your choice okay in exam we have to convert it in decimal but definitely in exam this type of digit will not come here it is an example i have shown to you so this is an idea where we have learned the volume of regular shaped object we know the volume of a cube a volume of a cuboid a volume of a uh, sphere cylinder cone and by that how we can able to find the density if the mass is given so mass by volume we can able to find the density for regular shaped object and depending on that we have given some numerical to you in the previous class and you have done it also i hope okay so today's target is to learn a new thing okay so i am mentioning one thing from this portion if any doubt you can ask me okay now we'll uh, go further what now here we want to know whether a body is given to us if it is not in a regular shape then how can we able to find the volume then density of a irregular shaped object irregular shaped object means assume object is given just like this okay we don't have any equation to find the density of it because we know the density d should be mass by volume mass we can find out by the general beam balance we are having okay beam balance you all know or electrical balance so by that we can able to find the mass that we have learned in class 6 but problem is for the volume if it is a regular shape we know there are equations of volume we all know for sphere for cylinder for cuboid we all know that but this shape what we have seen here it is not having a perfect shape then how we can able to find the volume of it and if we are not able to find the volume we cannot able to find the density so for finding the volume we have to use a measuring cylinder okay that we have done earlier also a measuring cylinder so we have to take a measuring cylinder assume in that cylinder some liquid is been kept okay and here assume this is the reading of measuring cylinder here this reading i have taken it is v1 now what we have to do now inside the measuring cylinder i have to put the object with the help of a thread okay this object i have put it with the help of a thread and then definitely the level of liquid should coming up okay as the level of liquid will coming up assume now the volume is v2 one thing we have to remember we have to use that liquid inside the container which will not make any sort of physical or chemical change with this object that means that object shouldn't dissolve inside it. I have told you earlier also. Assume I have taken a sugar cube. And here it is water. You put it inside. The sugar cube is dissolved. Then the level of the water upliftment will not understood. But if it is a stone. Assume it is a stone. And now I put it inside the water. And then the level of the water will be increased. And the stone will not dissolve inside the water. But if I have taken a chalk, we know the chalk can able to absorb water. So if I put chalk, the level of upliftment of the water is not proper because some amount of water should be absorbed by that object. So here that type of uh, solid we cannot able to use. So that things we have to remember. So initial volume is V1, final volume is V2. So we can write down 
what are displaced by the body how much water is displaced so that water v is equals to v2 minus v1 v2 minus v1 that much amount of water is displaced by that solid okay and what should be displaced water that will be the volume of body because as the body goes inside it will occupy the place and as it occupies the place that much amount of water will come up and that is v2 minus v1 that is the excess water and that should be the volume of the object so volume of the body v will be v2 minus v1 we have got the volume now it is very easier to find density density equals to m by v that means m by v2 minus v1 if i write it then we can easily find out the density of irregular shaped object or irregular shaped body please write it down this equation is very important and by the help of that equation we have to do some of the numerical okay and i'll give some homework also using this equation okay now i think it is clear if you are not able to write it down make your video pause here write it down and then move further now we'll see an example okay what is the example let's see so the example will see that assume a body of mass 40 gram is put inside water in measuring cylinder full stop initial volume of water is how much as you it is 50 ml generally we know for measuring cylinder uh, the measurement is done in ml and after the body goes inside the water the volume is 70 m find density and convert it into its SI unit. Okay. It's a long question. Let's see. Step by step, we will move. What the thing is given? The mass of the body. So here, whenever we have to write the answer, first we have to mention what the things are given to us. So mass m equals to 40 gram initial volume is how much 50 ml that means if it is a cylinder it initial volume it is here 50 ml so initial volume we have denoted by v1 so here we have to mention initial volume is equals to 50 ml what happens when the solid is put inside it okay when the solid goes inside the volume is increased and coming here and here it is 70 ml so we can write down initial volume v1 final volume v2 70 ml 
a volume of water displaced okay so volume of water displaced how much volume is displaced it is very clear that v equals to 70 minus 50 that is 20 ml 20 ml of water is displaced now 20 ml now that will be the volume of the stone or salt body whatever the thing i have taken now problem is that ml is the unit by which generally we have measured the volume of liquid but when we are talking about a body it is a solid so we cannot able to use ml we know that 1 ml equals to 1 centimeter cube that we know earlier that means v equals to 20 centimeter cube we can say volume of body is equals to 20 centimeter cube that we got and now what will be the density so density d equals to m by v m equals to how much 40 gram this one 20 2 so 2 gram per centimeter cube 2 gram per centimeter cube this is the density of the body but it is in cgs unit you have to convert it in si unit in SI, you have learned now, 1 gram per centimeter cube equals to 1000 kg per meter cube. Here it is 2 gram. That means, answer should be 2000 kg per meter cube. That should be the density of the body we have taken. So, it is a process by which we can able to find the density of irregular shaped object okay so i'm telling you one thing the density is very important chapter for you from density definitely in your exam numericals will come okay it may come for regular shaped object it may come for irregular shaped object so that's why the equations of volume i have given to you just read it again Okay, so equations I have given a uh, equation of uh, the volume equation of cube that is L cube, cuboid that is length into breadth into height. For sphere, it is 4 third pi r cube, where r is the radius. For cylinder, that is pi r square h, why r is the radius, h is the height. So you have asked that whether this equation from where this equation has come so i am telling you that equation is sole equation of mathematics so from where it is come that is not our point our point is using that equation you have to find the volume and if you can able to find the volume you can able to find that numerical of density one more thing as you see it is given in gram and it is coming in centimeter cube that's why we can easily make that calculation but assume the volume is coming in centimeter cube but mass is given in kg that time we have to convert this kg to gram make remember may remember just if you have not made the conversion then your answer should be wrong Either it will come in gram per centimeter cube or it will be in kg per meter cube. Gram for mass, centimeter cube for volume. Or otherwise, if you take convert it directly into SI, kg, you have to take the unit of mass in kg and you have to take the unit of volume in meter cube. Okay. If the units are not same physical, same unit system, then your answer will be wrong so make that thing remember i think it has been copied already it is not copied then make your video pause here copy it and then 
see the next thing or the next part. Now, up to density we have discussed. So it is a physical quantity. We have learned about the physical quantity. Now we'll go the and go to the another physical quantity. And comparatively, if you see this part is very easier, and that you have done earlier also. Now we will learn a physical quantity which is speed. But you see, first uh, in this chapter we have learned volume, then area, then density. There is a relation. Volume we have learned to find out the density, but speed it is not related with them it is completely different thing speed we know in maths also we have find out the speed okay that how fast a body move what is speed if anybody tells us by speed we understand how fast a body move Or how fast does a body move? Okay. So how fast a body moves? Now problem is that how we can able to measure it. So to measure speed, we need to find out one more physical quantity that is known as distance. What is distance? Assume this is a point A, this is a point B. And it is covered like this way. So a body starts from A by this path, it reaches to point B. Okay, so that is the path from A to B. Distance is known as total path length covered by a body. So as you a body starts from here and covering the whole path and reaching to the point B. This total path length, total from here to here, total path length is known as distance. Okay, total path length covered by a body is known as distance. Okay, and now what is speed? See, it is clear if I have given two bodies to cover the whole path, maybe one body reach earlier, one body reach after the first body. So who moves, uh, who takes less time, we have told his speed is more. Who takes more time, we tell his speed is less. So here one thing has come that is timing. Who will take more time? His speed will be less will take more less time his speed will be more so what is speed speed is nothing but cover distance per unit time the distance covered by a body per unit time okay if I have written in a form of equation the speed Speed generally we denote by v, small v. So small v equals to d by t, where d equals to distance and t is time. So from the equation only you can understand if time is less, then the speed will more. And if time is more, the speed will be less for same distance. So when it is asked what is speed, so after writing the definition, you must show the equation. It is important. So what is speed? I think it is clear to you. You have learned it earlier also. Now we're coming to the SI unit. So if I'm talking about the SI unit, so unit of velocity or well, unit of speed i'm not saying velocity unit of speed it is distance by time distance it is measured by meter time it is measured by second so si unit of speed is equals to meter per second or n by s that is 
the unit of speed okay in SI so similarly if I am finding out CGS unit of speed so it will be centimeter per second but there is a problem with these two units what is the problem so these two units are too small meter one meter it is very small no, one centimeter you can understand how smaller it is so whenever we have measured some practical thing in that case these unit systems are not used so for practical work okay for our use we have taken one unit that is kilometer per hour that is a unit which we have generally used but it is not a CGS or not a SI unit okay it is simply a unit we generally use that is kilometer per hour now it is told us what is the relation between kilometer per hour to meter per second how we can able to find it let's see okay uh, we have done here one kilometer per hour so one kilometer per hour we can write down one kilometer per one hour would add this way it's a division simply one kilometer distance is covered in one hour then the speed will be one kilometer per hour now we have to convert it in meter per second so one kilometer if i convert in meter so it should be thousand meter one hour if i convert it in second so one hour equals to 60 minute and one minute equals to 60 seconds so it is 60 into 60 3600 second now you see five sir eighteen so we can say it is five by eighteen meter per second so we can say one kilometer per hour is equals to five by eighteen meter per second one kilometer per hour is equals to five by eighteen meter per second or in reverse word 1 meter per second is equals to 18 by 5 kilometer per hour. That is the relation between meter per second and kilometer per hour. Okay, meter per second and kilometer per hour. Simply here we have seen meter per second and centimeter per second. That relation also we can find out. If I find out 1 meter per second, that is equals to 1 meter per 1 second. Okay. 1 meter equals to how much centimeter? It is 100 centimeter per 1 second. Because second is second. It is not converted here. Both are second. So it is 100 centimeter per second. So 1 meter per second equals to 100 centimeter per second. Make sure that this type of conversion you have to practice at your home also. If it is given 5 meter per second, 5.5 meter per second equals to how much centimeter per second? 10 kilometer equals to how much? Uh, 10 kilometer per hour equals to how much meter per second? 72 kilometer per hour equals to how much meter per second? So these conversions are needed because whenever you have to measure anything in your numerical that should be should be done in SI system that should be done in SI for the question of speed in density you can do it in CGS no problem if it is not asked in SI no need to make any conversion but for speed you have to remember that all the answers should come in SI units okay now we'll do a small thing and then we have seen a numerical and then this part should be over okay your chapter will be completed then one smaller thing we have to do now what smaller thing we have to do now the smaller thing is average speed average speed what is average speed assume a body it is starting from here 
and you have to reach in this point. This is a point A, this is a point B. Okay, you have to reach A to B, but it cannot be able to move directly. Okay, sometimes you have gone by tourist bus to move in any place. So you know that bus directly not go there. So it will take some uh, giving some stoppage. In general buses also, by which bus you have come to school, that it will start from school, after a certain distance it will stop, some students will drop there, then it will move further, then drop. So it will move certain certain distance in certain time and then uh, we are reaching to our home. So here if I want to find out the average speed, how we can able to get? So assume from A to C the body goes, assume the distance is D1 and to reach this point C the time takes T1. Okay. So from C then here it is D uh, will not take D here. Assume this point is E. Here it will take the distance D2 and time T2. From E to here it will reach it is F. So distance is D3 means from E to F it is D3 and time is taken it is T3. And from F to reach B assume the distance is D4 and time is taken T4. I have shown you some distances some different time interval. So first it is T1 then T2, T3, T4 different different times are taken different different distances are covered. And if it is asked, you have to find the average speed, then how we have to do that? So to find the average speed, that is known as V average, it is denoted as V AVG, that is equals to total distance by total time. Total distance by total time. Total distance is how much? D1 plus D2 plus D3 plus D4. D1 plus D2 plus D3 plus D4. Total time? T1 plus T2 plus T3 plus T4. This ratio is known as the average speed. This ratio is known as average speed speed total distance by total time now i have to see one example here assume a bus travels 500 meter in 8 second then okay 200 meter in 5 second and 300 meter in 7 second find average speed of bus okay let's see can we able to do it or not we definitely do it how we can able to do it See what informations are given to you. I have told whenever you have to do a numerical, first you write the information is given to you. First, in 8 second covers 500 meter. So here D1 equals to 500 and T1 equals to 8 second. Next, 5 second covers 200 meter. So D2 equals to 200. T2 equals to 5 second. Then 7 second covers 300 meter. D3 equals to 300 and T3 equals to 7 second. Okay. So D1, D2 and D3 we have got, we have got T1, T2 and T3. So now V average will be D1 plus D2 plus D3 
by t1 plus t2 plus t3 example okay 500 plus 200 plus 300 by 8 plus 5 plus 7 okay 5 plus 2 plus 3 so it is uh, 1000 and here it is 20 50 so the speed of the bus is 50 meter per second 50 meter per second that is the average speed of the bus average speed of the bus okay so this type of questions may come in exam okay one more example we can see here just in the previous part we have discussed about the uh, conversion of unit na? so using that only we have done one question and then this part will be over assume one car a car is moving with a speed of 72 km per hour 72 km per hour if a car is moving with a speed of 72 km per hour convert in meter per second how we can able to convert it what will be our answer we have just learned that 1 km per hour equals to 5 by 18 meter per second we have just learned okay just I think you have learned in class 5 also it is not like that it is very much new to you so 72 km per hour equals to 5 by 18 into 72 20 meter per second 20 meter per second and now if the question has come like this way a car moves in speed of 72 km per hour converted in meter per second how much distance it will cover in 8 second how much distance it will cover in 8 second so if it is not told to convert it in meter per second also to find the distance in second we have to convert it in meter per second and distance is equals to speed into time because if speed equals to distance by time distance equals to speed into time that is 20 into 8 160 meter that is our answer so this type of numericals may come today also i will give this type of numericals to you this is today's work okay many numericals we have done today so see it properly if any doubt just tell okay i'm just trying to solve it okay and then also after today's work i'll give some questions complete the question okay and keep it with you whenever the school gets open then we will check it thank you thank you very much